Digital video compression is the squashing up of the image signal so that it occupies a smaller space. This is useful for recording, for moving the signal about, or for delivering to an audience. Of course, when you have the compressed signal, you have to have the means to uncompress it to bring it back to something like the original picture. Now, the equipment that does the squashing up is called an encoder, and the equipment that does the unsquashing is the decoder. Now, I want you to imagine that this is a television image. Difficult? I know. When I squash this sponge, I squeeze the air out so that it occupies a smaller space. Then later on, I can allow it to come back again to the picture that we saw at the beginning. So image compression is something like this, but we don't squeeze air out of a sponge. We take out of the picture the information that the viewer doesn't see or doesn't need. There are many tools for video compression, but one of the most important is motion compensation. Here's how it works. We take an image which has an object in it, and we find that the next image has the same object in a different position. So rather than transmit the second picture, we can simply give instructions to the encoder to put the image in the first object in the right place in the next image. This is motion compensation. There are two things that you need to know about video compression. The first is asymmetry. The fact is that we make the encoder much more complex and sophisticated than the decoder. So this costs a lot more than that. And this is what you need for broadcasting, where you have a very large number of decoders and a small number of encoders. Now, the other thing you need to know is that the encoder manufacturer is free to make what he wants in the encoder, as long as the pictures he delivers can be received and seen by the decoder. So the decoder is actually the standard, and the encoder is up to the manufacturer. This is done so that manufacturers compete with each other to make ever better encoders over time, and thus the overall quality of the signal improved, because it is the encoding process which determines the bit rate. New compression tricks are being added all the time. They're bundled together in the standards bodies who create these systems. They usually have a name MPEG something or H something. And each time there's a new system, it's a significant step forward compared to the last one in compression efficiency. Of course, even within a given MPEG system, you can apply too much compression and you can get distortion. Thank you. So you need to match the capabilities of the system with the bit rate you want. Now, how much further can we go with compression? How much more can we achieve? I think the answer is a great deal because the encoder manufacturers today are still making ever better encoders and there are plans for next generation of MPEG coders in the next few years. I think this is going on for a very long time. In fact, much longer than I have sponges to cope with.